So folks, one thing you guys frequently say to me, I read your comments all the time. One thing you frequently say is that at the end of the day, there is not one iota of love or compassion or loyalty or humanity within the heart of old Donnie. That that man doesn't have any of the things that make the rest of us decent human beings. And at the core, what defines Donald Trump is transaction. His belief that the world can be boiled down to the fact that people People owe other people things or people are owed things and in his mind he is the only one he is the universal exception for the entirety of our species it doesn't apply to him he never owes anything to anybody else but people that he has done favors for has given things to as appointed owe things to him and that's something that just happened yesterday with a rude awakening because he realized he doesn't have nearly as much power in the gifts in the perks that he's given out that he thought so I want to do a couple things I want to lay out guys how old Donnie took a series of massive defeats I've covered them a bit but this is a good super cut for anybody that's been really busy the last couple days or just wants to revel in the humiliation of Trump explaining all of his losses and there's a central theme to them. Each judge wanted to know the same thing. Was there any precedent for appointing a special master to interfere with the evidence obtained by an FBI search warrant? Is there any precedent for exercising equitable jurisdiction in a pre-indictment scenario where there's no showing that the seizure itself was unlawful? We have been unable to find a case in which that uh, that has happened, Your Honor, and I don't think plaintiff has identified one in his briefs either. And in a way that makes sense because Rule 41, as you know, is a rule of federal criminal procedure, and so the natural place to raise that would be in some kind of criminal proceeding. Search warrants are contested by criminal defense lawyers all the time in criminal trials and in pretrial motion, motions in criminal cases. There is no criminal case yet about the government documents seized at Donald Trump's home. If Donald Trump or anyone else is charged with a crime involving those documents, their, their lawyers will no doubt try in some way to suppress the evidence obtained with that search warrant, claiming that the search warrant was somehow unlawful. But we are not there yet. The Justice Department made the point that the special master process could go on as long as it took Chairman Richard Neal to get Donald Trump's tax returns. First, as to the timeline and delay, I just want to make clear that, yes, we, Judge Deary should be issuing his, his final recommendation in the middle of next month, but of course then parties will lodge objections before the district court. Presumably there'll be more briefing on that, you know, perhaps an argument and a decision. And then, of course, I assume the agreed party would have a strong incentive to appeal to this court and then we'll be right back here. But that could take many, many months. And I, I can't do better than Justice Frankfurter in Cobbledick in which he said, you know, delay is fatal to the vindication of the criminal law. And I think that applies in spades over here. Two hours before that argument began in the federal appeals court in Atlanta today, the Trump lawyers went to their favorite judge in America, Judge Aileen Mercedes Cannon, who violated every known legal principle when she appointed a special master in the case. And the Trump lawyers asked Judge Cannon to unseal a fully unredacted version of the FBI affidavit that was used to obtain the search warrant in the case. Now, that affidavit is filled with confidential information and confidential sources who prosecutors do not want to reveal to Donald Trump at this time. If Donald Trump goes to trial as a criminal defendant in this case, he will get a full copy of that. Every ruling that Judge Cannon has made that the Justice Department has already appealed to the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals has been overruled by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. Tonight, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals seems on the verge of overruling her order for a special master and removing her from the case. And so today's filing by the Trump lawyers with that out of control judge will not go unnoticed by a federal appeals court that is already worried about what she has done in this case and can only help speed up the 11th Circuit's resolve to rule on the case that it heard today with the knowledge that delay is fatal. Again, 
He lost for a couple reasons. One, his cases are terrible. Two, his opponents are better than him. And his opponent's lawyers, you know, the federal government's lawyers, state government lawyers are better than him. This is a simple fact, right? Like he's losing because he doesn't have the legal firepower and he's losing because he doesn't have the facts on his side. Both of them together are a deadly combination. Lots of rich people with really good lawyers have gotten off cases without the facts being on their side because they've had really good lawyers. But as we know, Donald Trump doesn't have the best lawyers because he's unwilling to pay the maximum amount of money most of the time. And even if he is finally ready to, lots of lawyers that would be willing to work for a billionaire, quote unquote billionaire, former president aren't there because when you work with Trump, your career gets ruined and you might go to jail alongside him. So it's a no-no. But he's realizing, guys, that it the bribery didn't work. Donald Trump, in a sense, is bribing judges. Now, not in the in 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 the traditional sense where he is paying cash, where he is going to somebody with a sack of cash, like in a cartoon, and handing somebody a sack of cash with thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars in it, saying, "Hey, I've given you this money. Rule in my favor, and I'll give you the second half after. Rule in my favor, and you know I will make your life a life of luxury." I'll pay for your kid's school. I'll buy you that house you want. I'll give you whatever you want in that sense. Trump isn't doing that. Nonetheless, he views the judicial appointment system as a tool of bribery. He is paying these judges in loyalty and he is paying them in a job. That's how he sees it. So when he looks at this, he says... I am paying people this lifetime appointment and they owe me. They owe me in terms of passing the policies that I want, but more controversially, they owe me if I ever have a personal case before them. And that might have worked with Cannon. She might have quote unquote accepted the bribe, but it hasn't worked this time. This clip lays it out fantastically. And and Willie, so much of this he should have seen coming. Uh, He thought that that the judges on the Supreme Court were going to be like Judge Cannon, who yesterday uh, just took an absolute drubbing in the 11th Circuit. Again, for those that don't follow it, the 11th Circuit is one of the most conservative circuits in America. It's probably the rights version of the 9th Circuit out on the West Coast. Uh, But I know a lot of judges. I know a lot of people that have worked in the 11th Circuit. I mean, yeah, they're ideologically conservative. They are no nonsense, all business. And and here you had the 11th Circuit yesterday uh, in this hearing make it very clear they're going to 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 overturn um, what Judge Cannon did, which was preposterous. Uh, legal legal scholars uh, on the left, center, and right were saying it was preposterous. Well, the 11th Circuit stepping in and 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 may perhaps get rid of the special master. Uh, because there is no space uh, you, when you even go up to Clarence Thomas, you go up to Brett Kavanaugh, you go up to Amy Coney Barrett. If he thought he was going to get any special breaks uh, on these rulings, he's been been uh, sadly mistaken, not only on these rulings, but let's say it again, in the 55 or 65 cases that Trump attorneys brought to federal court. Uh, to try to, to assert widespread voter fraud. He went 0 and 65. This is quite a compelling argument for uh, this Supreme Court on these issues being, uh, being straightforward and calling balls and strikes. And this all gets to Donald Trump's mistaken mentality, which is, if I appointed you, I have impunity under you which is to say, I did you a favor, you do me a favor, like he's operating a a business deal in New York in the 1980s. And Hugo Lowell, if you look at this 11th Circuit decision, we're talking about a three-judge panel. To Joe's point, two of those three judges were Trump appointees, so he thought he was going to get a a good ride. Uh, Did not. What are the implications of this? What does it mean practically now, this ruling out of the 11th Circuit? Well, we don't have a ruling yet, but, you know, the indication the was, indication right, that, yeah. it, that this is going to be bad for Trump because they were basically like, you know, what's the difference between the documents case and any other uh, defendant pre-indictment? And the only thing that the Trump lawyers could settle on is, well, he's a former president, and that's why he should get special treatment. And not even the 11th Circuit yesterday seemed to buy that argument. And it was a real dropping, right? These... these the three panel basically said, you know, there is no instance in which 
um, you should get special treatment. Why should the judicial branch, given the separation of powers, be able to interfere and stop an executive branch investigation? And that was the kind of the fundamental issue at play. And I think, you know, that's why everyone came away from that hearing thinking Trump's special masters basically didn't get terminated. Yeah, you know, uh, Rev, you and I have known Donald Trump for a, a, a very long time. Um, I guess we're not surprised that he would think that if he appointed somebody, they were going to do him favors. Uh, but it shows a complete ignorance of the federal judiciary, a complete, absolute ignorance. And he keeps getting surprised. You know, he kept getting surprised like it's this quasi mob mentality like looking like like new york in the 1980s you know like trump is doing some shady maybe not technically illegal but definitely sleazy under the table sort of under the shadows deal where you do a favor for someone and they do a favor for you you give them something they scratch your back after you've scratched theirs and that's how trump sees this he sees the appointment of high jobs at the federal court and supreme court and appeals court he sees it as bribery he got caught last night trying to bribe judges or I guess trying to cash in the bribe and it didn't work yeah they're gonna vote on the row things yeah they're gonna do all of that but fundamentally right here the judges at every level except Cannon have been going against him the judges he appointed to the appeals court went against him they tore him apart in the in the arguments yesterday the judges that he appointed to the Supreme Court went against him and, and, and on these cases they've never gone for him and the judges that he didn't appoint but nonetheless have close relations relationships to like Thomas and Alito who have sometimes supported him they went against him as well so Trump is in this final realization that the bribery didn't work that Donald Trump through tools of buying people things or giving people things that may have worked in the business world that may have worked in certain parts of society that might work with shady actors from within the United States and around the world that that's one thing but you can't buy these people. And Trump is too dumb to understand that, yes, maybe in a sense, they, they have a, gratifica a, a, a gratification towards Trump. They have gratitude towards Trump because he gave them this big lifetime appointment. I'm sure that there is some of that, that these people are grateful and, and, and honored by what Donald Trump gave them, of course. But they have lifetime appointments like they're there for life. Like, it's really hard to get rid of a judge. So they're in, like, the safest job in America, and you're an ex-president facing serious jail time and or bankruptcy and or humiliation. And your job, even if you get elected again, is four years at most. So Trump doesn't understand that he can't cash anything in. He's at the mercy of these people. He can't bribe folks like maybe he could in the business world. It ain't gonna work. He got Trump... Tr caught trying to cash in a bribe on judges, but the judges, they didn't bite, and he failed miserably.